Uh oh. Are we on? Hello. Good evening, everybody. Friday of the apocalypse. Hello. That's George. I'm um, George. Um, I just played you my um, ancient um, album that I made with Gareth Koch last week. Could you give us a, a quick opinion? The most experimental... Um, uh, I, I, I can't quite find the words, but I loved how it wasn't driven by drums or a beat. Uh, some songs had a beat, but most... Oh, there was one song that was in a beautiful six like a 4-4 four, four, then a 2-4 four, or two three fours in a row but it was the uh, eastern mel- um, scales the Arabic um, scales that really drew me in I thought it was really really beautiful I, I loved it well done Gareth and Steve I think it's going to be a beauty thank you George you wouldn't do those advertisements if you didn't believe it would you <laughs> I'm just waiting for the check no really really good stuff Um, well, um, this is uh, the lockdown in Sydney. I'm sure it won't be like this this time next week. Um, stay home, mate. Honestly, what are you doing? <laughs> is that what they're saying? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I'm sitting in a cafe. Uh, well, I still can. Um... All right, George. Um, what do you think of bassoons? <laughs> oh, there's my. Thank you. Um, there's my um, okay, ice coffee. Bassoon. I'll, tell, I'll let you know about bassoons. You never really hear them in an orchestra, but when when they're not there, you notice it. And the other thing about a bassoon is, if they're in tune and the other people can hear them then the rest of the section is really in tune. If they're out of tune, it's really difficult for the oboe, flute and clarinet to stay in tune. Bassoons are a very important instrument of the orchestra. There you go. <laughs> um, what um, everybody needed to know. No, um, I met a guy in the Sydney Symphony Orchestra and he said he said he had a bassoon and it was worth $175,000. Fucking yeah. cheap. That's not... Um, that's not um, uh, uncommon. Yeah, they're they're very expensive instruments. And um, and and I I thought I thought my bass guitar, which was seven thousand dollars, was expensive. I know yeah. most most orchestral instruments, including violins, a cheap one is thirty or forty thousand dollars. Really? Yeah. What's your cello worth? Oh, mine's a very cheap one. Mine's only worth about ten grand. Thank you. It's worth ten grand. Can I borrow it? I know a good hock shop. <laughs> Actually, I, di- I don't know if Chris Park is a follower of yours, but Chris Park wants to wants to borrow. She wants to learn cello. Chris is a lovely woman. I hope. What does she play? Uh, she wants to learn cello. Oh. Yeah. You know, Chris, we were on radio with her. She used to work with ABC. Lovely woman. Listen, I've heard I heard they're doing fretted cellos. That would help me. My cello playing is very ordinary. I could, uh, given that I play a little bit of guitar and bass guitar and I'm used to frets, uh, my cello playing would, would improve with some frets. You know, the viola de gamba, which means violin of the foot, um, which is a cello precursor of the modern cello, that has frets. So there you go. But these days, you know, these modern string players, their ears are so good, they don't need frets, they... Their fingers know exactly where to go on the, on the... Spoiled by frets. Do people at home know what we're talking about? Um, of course they do. So guitars have frets, and you put your finger just before the fret, and you get the note. But cellos and violins and violas don't have that, and then they've just got to know where they are, or they could be a microtone off, right? But, but uh, they're trained to put it right in the right spot. Here, here is my... Ah, uh, no. Like He's showing off his muscles. Oh, right. That's not why I was doing it. <laughs> He's the most glamorous conductor in the world. Yeah, with my grey hair. With my, with my beach hair. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I hope we're not... No, 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 no. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> my sister's a... Oh, really? What's that? 
objective here, brother. Yeah. I'm, 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 one of, I'm a really good friend of the sustainable. Are you? Yeah. In fact, we've written a piece together. Really? <laughs> I can see the I can see the uh, family reception. Yeah, no, we all look the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you yeah. musician? Social no, no. distancing. Oh yeah, plenty of work. Oh there you go. No, just then and no, I'm very good friends. Really? Yeah, we're, we're very good. Um, I'm her TV show, I guess. Well George has been hijacked now by conversation. This time next week, we will look back on the fact that we were sitting in a cafe and chatting with people in wonder, because I don't think it's going to be happening. Well, there goes my conversation about music. Sister Mary is a, a wonderful composer who's written films, written pieces for the Sydney Symphony. Wow! And their brother Jack Finster is married to Justine Clark, who I've written a piece. Wow! Look at your hair. Pretty terrible. <laughs> um, yeah. So their that's brother, a fucking hairstyle. Their brother Jack is married to Justine Clark. Wow! And Justine Clark and I have um, what? No. <laughs> Um, Hi Justine. I don't know if you follow. Thanks for thanks for hijacking. Thanks for hijacking my fucking Instagram and all that. I didn't want that, did I? Oh yeah. So anyway, so we're walking out and these random people. Well, um. All right. What's happening, Steve? Well, George, um, the first time I ever heard of Stravinsky was I heard that the band Yes were using them for their intro tape, Rites of Spring. Oh, Rites of Spring. Oh, really? Tell us, tell us a bit about Stravinsky. Stravinsky um, broke the rules, didn't he? Yes, he did. He, he, he was taught by another Russian composer called Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov, who was a master orchestrator, and, and Stravinsky really um, explored the colours of the orchestra. See, he was taught... Hang on. What did Rimsky-Korsakov teach Stravinsky to do? Composing. Composition. He taught him to compose. Yes. How would you... How would you teach someone to compose, do you imagine? Like Haydn taught Beethoven. Like, like you what would you do? The, you teach them the rules of music, as in the harmony, you know, like chord five leads to chord one, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, just, yeah. So, so all the major composers had teachers, right. private teachers. Mozart's teacher was his father. Who wrote this song that goes, Papa Hayden's dead and gone, but his music lingers on. When his mood was one of bliss, he wrote happy songs like this. That's actually a Haydn tune. It's Haydn. They added, the, that's the second movement of the Surprise Symphony, Symphony No. 94. Um, and that's Haydn's melody, and they added those words later. He didn't write those who, words. Who added them? Lennon and McCartney? I, I don't know. Kil, Kilby and Kilby, I don't know. But, but I don't know who wrote them, but it wasn't him. He didn't write them. Okay. So Stravinsky. Stravinsky, um, Sergei Diaghilev was uh, an impresario. He was an entrepreneur for the um, Russian ballet. And France was mad for the Russian ballet. So he was looking for a composer. Stravinsky was recommended. And Stravin um, he took a chance on a... Diaghilev took a chance on a really relatively unknown young Russian composer called Igor Stravinsky because he was recommended because he had learnt with, Igor, uh, with Nikolai Rimsky Korsakov. And he wrote the Firebird. Um, the Firebird Suite. Music, he wrote that. That was what Yes started with, the Firebird Suite. Right, right. In, uh, he wrote it in 1910. 
wrote it in 1910 and it was a huge success. So they did another ballet the following year called Petrushka. That was a raging okay. success. Okay, question for you. Yeah. Was Stravinsky famous and rich in his own time? Yes. So would he have been touring around the empire playing music, yes. pulling chicks? Yes. And well, earning... Like living in hotels and like he was he was certainly earning a lot of money. I don't know whether he was pulling chicks or not. I think he was happily married. Oh. So he was he pulled one chick and he, he pulled one chick and he stayed with Mrs. Her. Stravinsky and he stayed with her. What was her what name? I forget his wife's name. I'm sure I should know. That. You know what? You know what, George? I bet I bet he came home one day and he went, "Hey, listen to this, Monica Stravinsky." And she went, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm so sick of that piano. Why don't you write... Why don't you write... Seriously, you would have, she would have said, why don't you write some fucking... Something I could whistle? What's this fucking shit? It's, it's changing key and time and all. What do you reckon? I reckon. Do, no, but seriously, do you think what wives of these great men appreciate what they're doing? Or they're like, oh, for fuck's sake, get off the piano and come and change the nappies or something. I'd only be guessing. I really don't know the answer huh? to that question. I, I'm sure I should have an educated answer. I'm, but I remember you were being, you were knocking up some music one day, and your philistine neighbour was complaining. So uh, classical fucking music going all the time. Oh yeah, my neighbour didn't like me playing classical music. My ex-wife didn't really like me playing classical music. I was studying Mahler once, and she would say, "Why?" And she's a musician. And she would say, why are you playing that music all the time? I said, because I'm studying it to conduct it. Right. So not everybody likes I probably shouldn't have said that. Sorry. Scratch that about Ma my ex wife. Yeah. Nobody's listening. Sorry. Oh my God, my hair looks um, hysterical. Yeah, that's what I said. All right. Um, I read in a book that Mahler's last words was Mozart. True. The last thing he said when he died, he said Mozart. What do you... What... what how do you interpret that? That Mozart was a master to which all of us should, all of us, all the great composers, not me, then, all the great composers should aspire to. He was the master. And, 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 and so the message is, even on his deathbed, Mahler was going, I'm still in wonder at what Mozart did. Yes. Yes, true. As opposed to what Oscar Wilde said on his deathbed, which was, Either, Either that, that will go, goes or, or I, I do. do. <laughs> Which I love. Famous last words. <laughs> um, uh, speaking of um, uh, looking back to early com earlier composers, Brahms wrote his first symphony when he was 50. 50? Um, yes. 50. 50? He wrote his first symphony when he was 50. 5 0. 5 0. And the reason he didn't write a symphony before that, as the books say, was because. Because his he wife said no. you're not allowed to no it was because Beethoven was the pinnacle and Beethoven's Ninth Symphony Brahms said you can't better it so what's the point of any of us you know us lesser mortals um, trying to write a piece that's anywhere near Beethoven how fucking great is that so, so he so it's he, like Sergeant Sergeant Pepper like yeah, of the day exactly right so finally he wrote his first symphony and he only wrote another three he only wrote four symphonies I mean Haydn wrote a um, hundred and something symphonies Mozart wrote 41 symphonies but he died when he was 35 Schubert wrote nine symphonies but he died when he was 31 Beethoven wrote nine symphonies Brahms only wrote four because he waited until he was 50 because he didn't think he was worthy to write an, um, a, um, a symphony before then yeah I'm feeling sleepy. I've got this da 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 da. Beautiful brown. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Um. Wow. That is what. That's what we're all looking for. This knockout piece that's so fucking incredible that everybody else goes. That's it. You can't top it. You've written a few knockout pieces. Oh, no, George, don't get it back to me. We're talking about the greats here. You've written a few great pieces. Oh, yeah. Hey, I was that guy had A minor and D. <laughs> if only the Rolling Stones thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, another song I had E minor and C. 
What do you think of that? Um, yeah, look, um, wow, Beethoven, Mozart. Kilby. <laughs> Beethoven, Mozart, Kilby. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> no, necessarily in that order. Who is the Mozart of today, Jill? Um, the Mozart of today is uh, maybe Carl Jenkins. No, maybe not. I don't know. I can't think of the best Mozart of today. But there Carl is no Mozart. You can't be Mozart of today. That's over. That's like, who's the Beatles of today? That position's taken, gone, and you can't be Mozart of today. Can you be a Beatles of today? No, you can't be the Beatles or Mozart. You've got to be something else new now. Okay. You can't, it, as soon as you try to be them, right. you're already defeated because they weren't being anybody when they did it. They were creating their own positions and then filling them. The Mozart and the Beatles. But now if you go, oh, I'm the Beatles of 2020, I'm the Mozart, you, you know you're already out of the fucking game, right? You heard it from the man, he right. That's I my can't opinion. argue against that. That's right. Um, that's my opinion. Um, in the end, it, it, this is my opinion, in the end it isn't about talent, it's about originality. I agree. It's, it's, it's do something. Did you see recently a guy or a woman called Genesis P. Orridge died? From, it was in a band called Throbbing Gristle. Okay. Um, not necessarily a terribly talented person, but a person with a shitload of originality. Um, like, that, that's sort of what, to me, that's always what counts. To, to, to do something different, even if you don't do it particularly well, is better than doing something well that everybody else does well. You know what I mean? Well, in terms of creativity, that's correct. Yeah. To deliver it, you need the talent. There you go. There you go. Um, is yes, you do. You do. What is t define talent? Well, for example, somebody like, if I may use example, somebody like Jack Houston. Jack Houston, talent. He's a huge talent. When he picks up a guitar, that guy has all the technique and all the know-how in the world to make it sound, to make the guitar sing. That's talent. Now. Um, is that talent or is that practice? Well, talent, ta uh, practice breeds talent. But what is talent though? What is raw talent? Did uh, Jack have talent the day he first picked up the guitar? I don't know him well enough to know that. No, but well, I, but, or somebody. But, but, somebody uh, but I know Mozart, for example, and uh, did recitals when he was five years old. Yeah. He, he had natural raw talent. You know? how, how can a child of five have that kind of talent? Um, it's just the, the way the brain works. That brain didn't he is write wired twinkle, that way. Didn't he write Twinkle Twinkle Little Star when he was... He wrote the variations of it. I don't know that it was his melody, but he came up with, um, he came up with a piece on that tune and made it a big, you know, like he played the theme and then, and then yeah. wrote variations around it. Quite amazing. So, like, when one of these classical big shots said, uh, like to their wife um, like I'm going in the room to write a symphony yeah. how long were we talking about to write a, a fucking symphony oh, well that's all they did for their living yeah, so but, but, to write a symphony yeah. um, they would have taken uh, a week a week a week a week maybe longer Beethoven Beethoven much longer than Mozart but, yeah. but Mozart could bring them out easily yeah. Maybe maybe longer than that, but Beethoven really, really struggled. He would take much longer, maybe six months. Mahler, Brahms took six months easily. It's, it seems to be the thinking that Mozart, of all of them, was really the boy wonder. The, uh, the early death killed off, I mean, if he'd lived to 60 or 70, it's like we just only can imagine what he might have done. Yeah, he, he was definitely a child prodigy. I mean, he wrote his first symphony, I think, when he was six or seven. Um, I do a symphony of his called, uh, well, it's symphony number 25 in G minor. It goes like this. It's a fantastic symphony. He wrote it when he was 17. 17. What, what were you and I doing at 17? I oh, it's fuck. Well, I had writing great songs. Like, haven't you heard Baby Grand? No. <laughs> I was writing... Um, actually, uh, well... I was writing, How come you never do the jet fair and rock? 
How come you never give me a shock? Um, and, ba- and Mozart was writing his 25th symphony. Um, I was chasing girls, that's all I was doing at 17. Why were they running away from you? <laughs> Georgie Georgie, can't you see? The girls made him cry. <laughs> can't you see why they were ch- <laughs> running away from me? Wow. Well, weren't you, weren't you sitting in your room practicing your bass guitar? Um, no. Otherwise, I'd be a shit hot bass guitarist, which I'm not. Never was. Wow. Um, well, weren't you sitting in your room practicing your cello? At 17, actually, I was. Yeah. I was. Yeah, I, I, I took to the cello big time then. Okay, tell me, George. Were you playing in a little orchestra when you were 17? I was playing in the Sydney Youth Orchestra. I bet there were some attractive violinists and stuff in that band. Am I, am I right or am I right? I'm not sure who you're referring to. But no, I'm, not, I'm just imagining. Every time you put together an orchestra for me, I'm just... Look, I hope this isn't a chauvinistic thing to say, is it? But the women are very attractive. That's all, that's all I can say. The women are very talented and attractive, and the men that are in the orchestra are also very talented, and I assume they're attractive. George comes out live on Instagram. <laughs> That's all right, George. There's a bit of buy in all of us. I don't know if Dimitri and Daniel, Daniel Lopez and Dimitri Caligaros are, are watching this, but hey, I think you're brilliant violinist. That's why you did that Sydney Rococo concert with us. Look, I have to say it's very intimidating when I turn up and there's these beautiful, beautiful people playing these classical instruments. They don't want to know about me. Or I saw Tim Rogers trying to chat one up once. They don't. They don't. They don't want to talk to us rock musicians at all they're, they're, they're like they're like machines they play their music they take their money they p- pack up their stuff and they go and they like they don't hang around and have a beer and smoke a joint and talk a, you know you know what i mean i'm sure if they were invited they would do so they would love to they're all really very, they're all very friendly people all of those people that i'm with i'm very very friendly with them and they all would like to um they would they would be happy to hang out if they what were. what about the girl on the french horn you mean from Sydney University? From oh, the Marian. Sydney University. Hello, Marion, if you're listening. Marion Brown, I think that was her. Was I remember she only said one thing to me the whole time. And she came up to me at the end. I said, here, I thought, here we go. And she came up to him. It all went quite well, didn't it? <laughs> Marion's a lovely girl and a lovely French horn player. She is. And, and, I used to, and I used to stand on the podium... Um, and I'd just be looking at Marion playing the French horn. She'd be playing back, looking at me the whole night. We were sort of, we had this, we were locked in eye contact, uh, and then we never said anything. And then right at the end, I, I, she came up. I thought she'd come. Well, this this is the last time I'm ever going to see you, or or something. She went. It all went very well, didn't it? I didn't know that conversation. It wasn't a conversation. It was one line, and I just went ah, oh, and she, that was it. She took a fucking French horn and fucked off into the night. I, I'm sure if you, if somehow there was something else organised, you would have attended. You would have loved to have said more okay. things to you. I'll tell you a role that fascinates me. Okay, it's a role that fascinates me. First violin. They're like the they're like the henchman. The concert master. The, they're, they're like the they're like your lieutenant in the orchestra. The concert master. The concert master dictates which, in which direction the bows go of the violins of the whole of the whole string section. Yeah. The concert master is a, 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 a critical member of the orchestra. Would that be like the musical director in a rock band? It's the leader of the orchestra. Yes, I guess. I guess the, the concert master is the musical director of the, of the orchestra. And how, how do those people get chosen? Based on their um, uh, skill on the violin. Their, their so, so you've got to be a violin, you can't be any other instrument? The concert master is always a violinist. Wow, well, what's with the fucking violins? They've got this hegemony over... They're like... They're like the, the royalty of the, and then all the rest of them are like the, the plebs. Because before there was a conductor, it was the violinist that led the orchestra. Right. Okay. 
and the bow yeah. was used like a yeah. substitute for the, the baton. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and so um, the violinist is a very, the, the head violinist, the concertmaster, runs the orchestra. Yeah. The, or, the, the conductor has. Um, what's the word, veto over that? Like if he really or she really wants... What do you mean d dictates which direction the strings go, the, vi the they bow in? What, they all start off like that? Yeah. Or like that? Yes. And then it's always that and that, always... But what happens when it gets out of sync and it's, it's doing that? It, it, it's up to the concertmaster to make sure it doesn't get out of sync. And if it gets out of sync in rehearsal, they stop. we stop and we, so, we fix it. So if some stupid viola player starts going the wrong way... It all. It you can expect to be called into the concert masters. For my viola friends out there, it's not always the violas. Although um, two set violin would probably disagree with that. They're they're always begging out the violas. You know, in rock and roll, we like viola because of John Cale. Part of my ignorance. Uh, viola. Jo John 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 Cale in the Velvet Underground played the viola and so now when you meet someone who knows nothing about rock about classical music they'll go oh i like viola oh really yeah i like the viola uh, why do you like viola oh because of john cale because he he sort of um he sort of did some droning and uh, actually he made an album called paris 1919 have you ever heard that it's like a pretty fully a lot of fully orchestrated stuff he really Although he could do his music concrete and droning and screeching and stuff, he really could play. He, w he, was, a, he was a proper um, viola player, yeah. Wow, I didn't know Yeah, I, 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 someone, I heard someone describe him as just as me mean as Lou Reed, but with a Welsh attitude that made it even worse. Wow. Like, like a Welshman who lived in New York all his life. He really likes to... He knows what he wants, you better fucking give it to him. I, I'm like you all, if you didn't know of that, I'm I'm being educated and I love that. About viola. Oh, I was listening to, you know okay, two most famous flute solos. Jethro Tull? Oh Okay, I, I, no, in, in, I wasn't thinking Jethro Tull, but you're right. No, I was thinking um, Knights in White Satin. Oh, I love it. And what's, what's the instrument that plays the solo on um, Californian Dreamer? That's the alto flute. The it's alto an alto flute. flute. What's alto mean? Lower? Yes. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, a bigger, it's bigger than the regular flute. The, re the regular flute is in C and the alto flute is in G, which is a little bit lower. What do you mean is in G? What does that mean? Means, when you blow it open? Yeah, when you when when the um, alto flute flautist sees a C on the, on the page and plays a C, it's actually, it's actually going to sound in G. That's fucking confusing. What about that? It's called the transposing instrument, and there are many in the orchestra. The clarinet is in B flat, the trumpet is in B flat, the French horn is in F. Um, what else is transposed? That's, that's so they're the all, main one. So they're all in that G, C, B flat, F yeah. kind. There's nothing in A or D. There's the clarinet in A. Well, what um, happens? What does he do when everybody's in F? Um, it has to transpose. They, yeah, yeah they, they're, they're good at side transposing, especially trumpeters. Like, like they transpose as they play. Yes. They see an F and go, that's an A. Or yes. they see an A and they go, exactly. wow. Yeah. It takes a brilliant mind. That's why orchestral um, players, actually, they don't make much money, unfortunately. But that's why they earn the bucks. Because yeah. it's really hard stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so the, uh, the alto flute is in G. It's not a very common instrument. You, you rarely see it in orchestras, but they used it in, um, what's the song you said by the Mummers and Puppets? All the leaves are brown and the sky is grey. Great instrument. I went for a walk so I, on a winter's day. It's a beautiful piece of music. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, here's another. Um, I bought an ocarina. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, and guess what? I can't get a fucking squeak out of it. It's, I saw this video of a girl standing by the side of a fjord playing it. Oh, lovely, like playing this melody to call in the sheep. This girl with blonde hair and, and um, playing this ocarina on this beautiful Scandinavian day, and I thought, that's for me, and I got it, and... 
Now people think it's a weird bong or something. I can't, I can't get a squeak out of it. And now I've lost my pan pipes. Well, maybe um, you should try and get them to make a sound out of your bong. You might, you might be successful. I don't have a bong, George. <laughs> um, I hate bongs. You could, so you, do you play the ocarina like it? Is that how it goes? Yeah, you're making it look easy. I'm making it look like a <laughs> Yeah, that's all it is, George. <laughs> That's all you have to do. No, okay. This is the problem with it, George. Are you ready? It only makes sound. You have to cover up all the holes and only make sounds when you take your fingers off. So you have to take your fingers off, not on. It's not like they're all empty and then you put one on to get the note. Yeah, no, like a recorder. It's the opposite. So you've got to have them all on and then you take one off here and one off there. To play the notes. So that's that's just. Uh, it's like terms and uh, conditions. You have to opt out as opposed to opt in. It's like you know, you know what I mean. Terms and conditions. Like if you, unless you tick that box, you're going to be locked into it. Ah, uh, uh, I can't go. Uh, what can I do with an instrument like that? The fucking ocarina. Okay, can you tell me one use of ocarina in rock and roll? No. Wow, thing. Can you? You make my heart sing. Wow, boom. Yep, that's Ocarina, my friend. Wow, the man knows much more about music than me. Can you imagine the, the kinks in 1965 in a studio and, and they do this song that's like really primitive. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. It's like one of the most primitive songs you ever heard, and then s- someone says, Oh, yeah, we know what we need now. Uh, and someone goes, What? An ocarina. Is and that... they, they bring it. Yeah, that's an ocarina. Is that the kinks, is it? It's the trogs. I thought you said the kinks. The trogs. Okay, I, I love I loved Wild Thing by the trogs. I had no idea it was an ocarina. Thank you for learning me. Um, and of course, another weird instrument to uh, remark upon quickly is the bass recorder in U- Ruby Tuesday. Oh, I love Ruby Tuesday. That's a great song and great use of the bass recorder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or tenor rec- at least the, uh, is it the bass recorder or the treble recorder? Bass recorder. It's a bass recorder. Yeah. Tell me, George, have you ever mucked around on a mellotron? No. No. Never. No, but I love I love the use of the mellotron. Um, the church have used it, haven't they? Church uses Mellotron. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tim does it, doesn't it? Is it Tim that uses the Mellotron? Or is it uh, well, I sort of am allowed to sometimes too. You mean in the studio, but live, Tim... I, uh, 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 I, I play bass and Mellotron and sing and then I go home and Tim replaces it all. <laughs> Good on you, Tim. Um... Wow, it's, it's, it's like a summer's night here in Coogee George, isn't it? We had Look. a lovely swim at Wiley's today, and uh, we're, um, we're feeling you know, we're, like we need some therapy, and uh, Wiley's provided that today. So. Yeah. Uh, thanks for telling everyone about our secret pool. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's all right. Can I interrupt you? So how can I listen to this? Uh, you, go on to his, you go on to Steve's Instagram page, Steve Kilby. And, Steve Kilby. Yeah, and you go to his stories, and you press it, and All you can see it. can see it. He'll know. Yeah. Steve Kilby. Yeah, yeah but it's, uh, with no vowels. Steve Kilby with no vowels. So oh. Better S-T- than Steve Kilby with no vowels. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> that's a bit much. It's, it's, it's Steve STV. K-L-B-Y. If you go on there now, you'll see it. Have you got it? Yeah, now we can have Can we see Mum? <laughs> um, <laughs> what inception. happens if we face each other? Is it going to feed back? <laughs> We're getting an infinite regress. That's so funny. Hey, I yeah. just have to ask you. Right. Hey, um, can I just ask you? Yes. Violinist. Brandenburg Orchestra, the lead violin, how amazing is he? Are you talking about the Australian Tambor Orchestra or the Brandenburg? I hate that when people hijack my um, broadcast. I really do. I think that's. I think that's a height of fucking rudeness. I mean, 
we went to see Vivaldi's Venice oh, yeah. a month ago, a yeah. few weeks ago, and there was a French harpist who was amazing. Hijacking my conductor. And we said, the thing about the harpist is that there is nothing to do with you. Hi Israel, I'm good. I'm, <laughs> I'm still good. Well, things, um, yeah, it's still a free world, um, Hambo, but um, I don't think it's going to look like that, like this next weekend somehow, do you? Look at this. Well, there's girls walking up the street in bikinis and everything. Um, yeah. Oh, have you got to go? Oh, no. Lovely to meet you. Yeah. That's what, that's what um, Justine said. I said, um, uh, Hi. Hello. How are you going? I'm all right. How are you? Good. How are the people? Oh, they're loving it. Good. They're loving you. I know. Oh my! I've spiked. My no, no. My my. Soon, as soon as you came on, I went through the roof. Oh, okay. I don't, yeah. See you later. Yeah. What's your name? Hi, I'm Katia. Katia. Nice yeah. Lovely to meet you. See you. Yeah. Bye. Did, did, Bye. George, did you get the number? Um, I got their last name. That's all I know. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Wow. You never know what's going to happen in Kuji, do you? Tell me, Steve. What, what, what's oh, what's for dessert? Is there any dessert? Have you got um cream caramel? What what? If you, have I got to go and look at look? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go and have a look at the cakes. You can come with me. Enjoy the cake selection. All right. Here we go. We're going to have a look at the cakes. Oh Jesus. Oh. <laughs> I shouldn't have any of that, should I? My God. Oh, uh, is that apple pie? Uh, apple and rhubarb, and this one apple and crumble. Apple and crumble. Apple crumble. I have an apple crumble. One slice? Yes, please. With ice cream, or any cream in it? With ice cream. With ice cream. Do you yeah. want to make warm? Warm, yes. yes. Oh, I'm having warm apple crumble. Hey, gee, I'm having warm apple crumble with ice cream. Very nice. I'm sure everyone would love to join me. Uh, I haven't been, I haven't been around. I'm home. Steve. I have to back to music for a second. Yes, George. Tell me um, your thoughts on the whole electric light orchestra career. Ele electric Light Orchestra? Yeah, ELO. Tell me about them. I think the le Electric Light Orchestra exists because they took a certain period of the Beatles, like Strawberry Fields, I'm the War Us era Beatles, and said, let's do this forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And they do it bloody well. And uh, there's a few Electric Light Orchestra songs I really love. Um, I really, yes, I really like... I mean, I, I don't sit around listening to them over and over and over. Yeah. But um, I like... Xanadu <laughs> Now we are here In Xanadu <laughs> There are two things I think about the electric light orchestra. One, I, I love the string arrangements. And I what have they got? What, what, what instruments have they got? Mainly violins and cellos, two. but... I, Two violins and a well, cello. Well, live they did, but I'm sure on record it was violin either, either overdubbed or many more of them. Yeah. But live they only ever had a few on Did, did Jeff Lynne write all those arrangements? As far as I know, he did. But that's the second point about um, ELO. Other than the string arrangements, I think Jeff Lynne is one talented man. Very, I love his songwriting. I love. I totally his... agree. Excuse I totally me. agree. However, one thing he lacking slightly yeah. as brilliant as he is yeah. is originality because right. he no but he That's sort true. of sounds like he sounds like a mixture of the Beatles and yes. he sort of sounds like everybody he works with yes. 
he's not he, he's not but he's brilliant in all other ways I, I must admit yeah, I agree with you I, I see that um, and at the same time and this is not to contradict that there are so, certain songs like Living Thing and Telephone Line it's a living thing and Telephone Line especially which, oh. even though the Beatles would have and could have written that um, they didn't yeah and he did and I don't know and he's got a beautiful voice he does he, he was a wonderful member of the German does. Wolverine so uh, when I think ELO, I think of the brilliant oh, Jeff Lynn. Um, I, I, only, I only say, you know, no, he is a totally brilliant guy. He really is. He does sound like the Beatles, though. You know? Um, but I, um, I love him. Uh, who else are we talking about now? Um, oh, Alan Parsons. No, we're not. No, we're not talking about okay, home we're not pass. Talking about Alan no. Who else do you want to talk about? Um, who is your current? Do you have any? Have you heard anything new that you like? We're talking about this last no, no, only um, new towel smell. Hey, hey, tell me some, a band that I hadn't heard of until you told me, and I've since listened to them and I like them. Tell me about Sugar Ross. Sugar Ross. Oh, sorry, I said it wrongly. Sugar Ross. Sugar Ross are an Icelandic band, and the leader and the singer plays guitar with a violin bow and he sings in his own language it's sort of like a mixture between Icelandic and English and they've made umpteen albums and um, I think they're I, I think they make the most beautiful spiritual music in rock and roll I, I, I think they're truly doing something new um, and their music their music is like a prayer um, and especially singing in his own language. So it could be about anything at all. So um, incredibly beautiful band. I wonder how many of you out there know Sigur Ross. Oh, everybody knows Sigur Ross now. Okay. They've, been around, they've been around a real long time. Let, let's um, go on a slightly different topic. Uh, the topic of collaboration. You've collaborated with some amazing people in over the over your time, Kate Sobrano, and you, Kate Sobrano, Martin Kennedy, least of all me, um, Gary Posh lately. Um, tell me about collaborating. What do you love about collaborating? Um, is there a formula? Is it always different? Um, talk to me about collaborations and maybe some of your favourite collaborations and why. Well, it's easier because you don't have to do as much because there's somebody else doing the work for you. <laughs> I love that with Martin Kennedy and he just says, oh, here's an album, can you sing? And he takes away all the, oh my God, here come, is that apple pie? Oh my God, my apple pie is approaching. <laughs> Do you want a spoon? I'm okay, I'm okay. All done uh, My apple pie is approaching. Um, I'm probably going to have to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to jump off here, George, to have my apple pie. Good idea. We're probably just about at the end of our chat. So it's good night from George. Good night from me. What's going on there? Oh. We're, 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 doing a, we're doing a piece right. on you. No. Oh, me, no. Yeah. We're stalking you. All right. Um, see you later, everybody. Uh, we love you. Goodbye from George. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from you. Goodbye from every mother. Bye.